not here as you can see instead it will be i actual to be taking over the host this time yeah i'm his twin brother actual you know the opposite of abstract is actual so yeah that's me that's why i started with oh no instead of all right okay yeah you get it uh yeah you can pretty much tell that i have a change in appearance uh, not exactly what I like because uh, instead of that bombastic mess, now I look like I have a Sun Kui at the top of my head. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is what it is, right? So let us just move right on and take, uh, talk a little bit more about this episode today. It's very similar to the previous episode. That's why we kind of call it part two. In this episode, Arthurs as well as Super Cat K will then share their experience as seasoned streamers, imparting some valuable lessons over to their valuable mentees. So, without further ado, let us just listen up and see what we can learn from these two streamers. When I started my Discord community, I was the only person that said good morning every single day. And nine months later, people can say good morning without me being there. But that could not have happened if I had not done it every single day. Even though it's freaking lame and like nobody replies me. And But when you start doing these sort of things consistently, people recognize and then they will start to, to do it themselves. Your viewers are a reflection of who you are as a streamer. February is coming up. Think yeah. about the streams you want to do on which day. That's one. And maybe one or two bigger events that you have in the month. So I know you have this going on a date with someone. Is this still going oh, on? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm planning to do it on the third. Basically, this coming Thursday. So that's great. I would imagine, and this is what you did, right? You announced it on your stream and you were telling them, mm. guys. I will be going on an IRL date with a very special guest. The special guest is... Cutie pie. Then that becomes a special content piece that is not music and that is not gaming. Ah, okay. So what you need to do yeah. is you need to make sure that this specific stream is hyped up. That means people know that Jemmy is going to be going on this stream with this girl on this date at this time. Market it. Basically, this is more marketing. Making sure people know the, the stream is coming up. So I actually started streams with horror games and Apex. So, um, and CSGO. So I'm not sure, you know, if I want to be dragging all of that in, you know, and be classified as a music and FPS streamer. I haven't really thought of like, mm, do I really want to do that or should I just stick to Valorant first? Where you are currently at, right, is very crucial for you to not do too varied content. It's important not to, I would say, diversify the content too much. Um, right now because like I mentioned people want and need that familiarity of what you do so music sounds like a big staple make make it known that music is the big staple because it sounds like music is 50% and then 50% is kind of anything else right whether that's Valorant or Apex or whatever other game or IRL or just chatting or whatever um, so I think that's one way of refining the content but I think average viewer is a benchmark of how well uh, I am performing or how well I'm doing. That is the most important metric to me and I take it as a measure of growth as well. So I personally look at every single month how much my average viewer increases. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a fair, the main um, kind of metric that we look at. Lah. I, I think I also want to kind of like push you a little bit or to challenge you a little bit. I kind of want you to see, apart from the average viewer, right? What else do you think you want to start focusing on or start looking at a bit more that can help you in your current position? Because of the fact that I don't game, being present on Twitch is sometimes a little bit harder uh, for me. Uh, so the advice that she gave me is to kind of find a comfy space that I can work on or content that I can find that is comfortable for me to do. Uh, that is not too intensive and something that I can just kind of chill with and fall back on on a regular day so that I don't burn out as easily. You know, find things that are interesting to you that you can do on stream but at the same time, it's really more to help you and your mental 
um, well-being more than anything else. But we're just kind of covering it up, you know, by doing it on stream and, and, and things like that. I feel that one of the things that she mentioned is something that I really want to explore. It is to explore the possibility of doing stress relieving or therapeutic things on stream. And instead of doing the typical things, because sometimes if you do the, the things that you're so used to very, very often, it becomes very tiring, which is like the topic of the of burnout. <laughs> Um, as much as you can. I, I've always wanted to do like a stream, right? Where I just go and like do my nails and like do my hair because I want to, you know, but I've never done it long because I don't know how to do it. You know, things that you find fun for yourself and then you kind of double it up as content and then you double it up um, for your hours. Um, so it's just like mm. shifting the mentality a little bit uh, to take care of yourself. Passion enough. I will say, right? Passion is enough to keep you going. Will that passion make you earn more money? That's a different thing. When you keep going, right? You are always there to stream. You then have the option to elevate rather than wanting to elevate on the get go. So, is passion enough? I think passion is enough. Because with passion, you can stream every day, seven days a week, six hours a day for the next five to six years. But I cannot guarantee you that passion is gonna get you the money. I'm pretty sure you guys, some of you, read about the Twitch leaks. How much money me, style, the knee, super cat K, right? And, and even some of those mentors. If you guys go and find the ready or find the leaks, you guys will know. Yeah. Like you will be looking at the money and you divide the months. You're like, how the hell did this yeah. person leak? No, it's because I can tell you honestly, the money that we earn on Twitch is maybe at most 40% of our total revenue. For Singaporean, right? Sponsorship from overseas and or even like things that I'm doing right now, like uh, attending interviews, doing sponsored content, games. These are the things that eventually will make up of your stable income. Do you still speak in Singlish on your stream or no, no right? I hear your voice becomes very different because, is it because you're catering to an international audience? Oh my God, the zombies are coming, man. Oh, there we go. When I first started streaming, right? All these streamers that in my directory that became bigger numbers, all of us had less than 100 viewers. I myself, when I started, there was only 10, 20. I also know that locally there isn't anybody. So when I when I stream, right, I just assume that it's only Americans or uh, rest of the world watching. So I rarely speak Singlish. It's not because I don't like Singlish. We are catering not just local anymore. Singapore is this small. Who's been, when she started playing Monster Hunter, she only speaks English. You notice she don't even speak English. You should go and farm Naga Kuga when you hit Naga Kuga, then try to get materials for the sword. It's really good. That was the time she she grew really exponentially. She went from 50, 100 to 200, you know, and then that obviously bring forward to IRL. Now, when she do IRL, she's local, then the Singlish come back, that's fine. But for gaming, I would say try to avoid Singlish. You give people a lot of expectations and then when you never do do it, they'll get let down. And I did that a lot. Like, I say, oh, I'm gonna do this. But then when the day it comes, right, I bail out. <laughs> now, now that I think about it, right, I think it's just burnt off. I think the problem is you don't know what you want to do yet. I, I don't think the problem is because you don't have what it takes to be a streamer. Like I say, everybody can be a streamer. I say this a lot of time. I think the problem is you 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 really want to do something that you, you like to do. But until you find it, right, you really don't know whether you want to commit and or can do it. Sometimes when something is really fun, it just very automatically one. You just wake up and you just want to play it. But then it carries your schedule. It carries you at the same time. Uh, because it's fun and you're interested, then the burnout don't happen very often. My observation with you all for the last five weeks, right, is that all of you can play video games while you stream. I've seen it already. I know it's not the same game. I, you know, you play rhythm game, you play FPS game, Fairy play some, uh, Apex play some, uh, uh, MMORPG. Like Monster Hunter. When you, okay, how many of you here play Monster Hunter when you launch? Did you all feel burnout when you were doing that four hours? Let's just say no. tutorial and learn the game and hunting no. the mobs. No. You see what I mean? This lost arc, I think, if you're interested in multiplayer game, uh, can give it a go, can try. Can feed in a month or two, very easy, really. Do you think you'll benefit from like being in C since the game is region locked? You you can use VPN, you know, you, you know right? You can yeah, I've done uh, what a uh, debut told me to do. Yes, so yes, I, you I can use VPN. 
a lot of Southeast Asia is also playing the game. In fact, there's a lot of Southeast Asia that also want to play the game, but they don't know how to do it. So, if you're a Southeast Asia streamer, they might just drop by and ask you, how did you play this in Southeast Asia? Free topic already, free talking point already. And then that is also a, a time to like get them to like stay to your channel. So sometimes this little thing, you see this little thing, you might think not streaming related, right? But sometimes these are the little thing that could be something for you that other people wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't find the chance to go and ask the others, you know? One of the things that actually others affirm for me, right, was that the best thing to do um, whenever you go live is to be yourself. The more yourself you are on the stream, although you may be kind of like vulnerable because you, you're putting yourself out there, right? It relieves a good bulk of the pressure to not put up a persona. Rather than streaming to just try to get growth, sometimes you can just stream it to like be yourself, you know, talk about your your souls, talk about your, your bad day, you know, then, I mean, just chatting, like, basically like just chatting. My, my parents is always called to the principal office every three days. It's either I didn't do my homework, or I score really bad. It makes them understand you. And also at the same time, you can just express yourself. You know, sometimes, I don't want to make it sound like use it as content, but sometimes these are the things that people also like watching. Atas keeps up with the game trend, so he knows which games are uh, hyped up, which one is game that I should be playing. He knows which game genres that I normally play, so he finds games that are uh, to my style. I can consider playing for maybe like in the long run so for as filler content uh, similar to MMOs or Monster Hunter even FPS games he always gives really good pointers on how I could treat the games instead of just playing the game and there we have it. The lessons coming in from Arthur's as well as Super Cat K will definitely help the mentees a lot and I hope that it would help you as well. It is a lot to absorb but hang in there guys. Speaking of absorb though, absorbing all of these skills are definitely pivotal and very important in order for you to become a better streamer. However, just these skills alone is only half the battle won. Because in order for you to win the war, you will need to take a look at your gears. Gears and of course equipment are very important in order for you to elevate yourself to the next level. So in the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at the mentees, then unboxing some of these amazing products from our amazing sponsors. So make sure you guys hit the notification bell and subscribe. Make sure that you guys don't miss any episodes at all. And with that all said and done, I, the Sun Kui, will be signing off. Take care.